Okay, so working session two. So recall that the aim for the moment uh, is to understand in what situations we can use this uh, free energy asymptotic formula, which is roughly speaking says something like, um, something like this, whether we can use it to describe the free energy defined as the uh, negative log partition function, where the partition function is the integral over some region of W. Uh, and the way that what Watanabe talks about it and the way that Edmund was just talking about it is that the, uh, the partition function is an integral over all of W, but we can define it alternatively as an integral over some region V. And if V happens to contain uh, some singularity, then in integrating over V and then taking the negative negative logarithm um, gives us a function of V. And we want to know when we can use a similar formula to this one to talk about Fn of V. Okay, so that was what I introduced last time. I'll say no more about it. What I want to do now is uh, is clarify some suggestions that Edmund made last time for trying to derive this from statements that are already in the Green Book. So remember, the Green Book is Mathematical Theory of Bay Bayesian Statistics by Watanabe. Uh, the WBIC paper, which we also talked about last time, has a version of this free energy asymptotic formula. Uh, and I'll just briefly recall that in the Gray Book, you have this formula star, but only in the case where the true distribution is realizable. So um, that's fine in the picture I drew, right? In the picture I drew, this singular set was meant to be W0. And if I restrict my consideration to V, well, V still contains a parameter that gives the true distribution. It intersects W0. So we can use the results in the gray book in principle to um, talk about this asymptotic uh, expansion of the free energy, but we're also interested in a more general situation where um, we're just talking about a local concentration of the posterior, which is away from W0, as does happen in practice. And we want to know um, under what conditions can we get something like the formula star for the negative logarithm of the integral of the posterior over a region like that say, V prime. Uh, maybe just, so in the case where n goes to infinity, uh, of course, you'd expect that to go to zero or, um, right, the, the posterior can't concentrate away from W zero as long as it's not empty if, as n goes to infinity, but for finite n, uh, we are interested in that. Okay, so I'm just going to state some definitions from the green book, uh, which we're going to use. And the first one is relatively finite variance. So, um, okay, so from the green book. So I'm not going to, the notation is the standard notation. So P and Q and W and X. Uh, I'll just take those as understood. So consider for a pair W0 and W in the space of parameters, uh, the log density ratio, that's just a, a name, FXW0, W, which is the thing you'd write down in order to integrate over um, X to compute uh, 
right? So if if p x w zero were the true distribution, uh, this is the density, meaning the thing that you integrate to give k w, right? So k w is the integral over q x uh, f x w zero w dx. So it's a density for the KL divergence, but I'm not assuming that W0, I mean, in this formula, the log density ratio W0 is just any other point of W, right? But I'm thinking about it as the thing I'm using to measure the density. Uh, okay, maybe a picture helps here. So I'm assuming there is a true distribution, but I'm not assuming it's realizable. So uh, how should I draw this picture? Um, so here's Qx, and I'm considering now multiple points. Well, maybe I should draw it a bit better than that. Um, so for the reasons I just elaborated, we want to consider the case where the true distribution is not realizable because that's what's happening here. It doesn't intersect W0. If we consider a phase uh, that is a region of posterior concentration away from W0, then the non-realizable case becomes important. The Green Book addresses this to a greater degree than the Gray Book, and to I think it's more or less at the same level as, as the WBIC paper, and maybe it's been cleaned up terminologically. Okay, uh, so suppose the true distribution is out here, and this is a picture Watanabe draws. So what we're going to consider is uh, so in the green book, W0 doesn't mean where K is zero. It means those parameters that minimize the average log loss. So maybe I'll just put up the definition of L here. Uh, let's remember L, L is the average over the LN, right? So that's average log loss differs by the entropy of the true distribution from K. So uh, QX log PX W DX. Okay, um, so minimizing this is the same as minimizing K. So as I've drawn this picture to the right, these points W0 and W0 prime, uh, how are you supposed to read W itself? Well, you could read it as the area to the right, I guess, uh, which I'll draw in green, I suppose. Um, right, so this stuff over here is all, all W. And W0 and W0 prime are the closest that you can get. Uh, to the true distribution um, within W. So the realizable case would be where actually that distance here is, is zero for one of these parameters and therefore for both, right? Um, but in between, so we can impose a condition which is a bit weaker than realizable, which is what Watanabe calls relatively finite variance. So we say, I forget, Edmund, the precise terminology here. Is it the true distribution has relatively finite variance for the model or that the triple has relative finite variance? I, I can't quite remember. Uh, I think it's just the, actually, it's just the model, isn't it? Not even the prior. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, there's no, there's no role for the prior. That's right, yeah. Yep, relative <laughs> finite variance of the log density ratio function. Right, which so depends. Li literally the one up there, yeah. Yeah, so it depends on PQ. So let's just say the pair has relatively finite variance. Wait, not, not even Q. 
Well, Q's in L, right? I don't know how we would make sense of W0. Uh, oh, oh, it doesn't no. matter. It's just yeah. for any... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good. Glad I asked. Should we start calling um, the, the W0 that you wrote as like W optimal or W best or something? <laughs> it's, it's getting... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I like I like that suggestion. Let's call it W optimal. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yep. Yep. And so W say, zero is literally zero. Yeah. Yep. So we say the model has relatively finite variance if, and this, I don't think. Uh, this will need explanation. So if there exists a constant such that for any pair, so this is the integral over qx of, of this log density ratio, satisfies this. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So uh, you define the uh, log density ratio as for any pair w not w, um, but in the book it's, it's w not is in w optimal. Um, does uh, does that make a difference? Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, I mean yeah. In in all of this, w zero should be w optimal. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I guess, um, I guess here it doesn't matter. Thing. But well, we don't. Uh, I think for for what I just said, it it's fine. But for the statement that wants to interpret this, I, I guess it's necessary for it to. Mm -hmm. Right for w zero and w optimal and w in w. Uh, this condition. Yep. Okay. So um, I don't claim to really understand what this means, but uh, the way to read it is to divide through by the variance on the right-hand side. So relatively finite variance, well, what does the finiteness mean? Uh, it means that one over C zero is an upper bound for, for this term here. I'm on the second board now. So the variance is finite relative to, um, I mean, this term on the bottom is kind of a substitute for for L, right? But where you use W0 instead of the true distribution. So I'll update the picture in a second. So how do I think about the denominator? Let's not worry about the numerator for a moment. So I've got my picture. Here's QX. Uh, here's my W0. Suppose I pick a W here, right? So remember, everything to the right of that line is meant to be interpret it as W. So think about this distance here. So that's, I mean, if I was to measure the difference in the KL divergence, uh, so DKL from, from um, this to this, so that's the integral of log. Okay, but what is uh, what is this term here? Well, by definition, that's um, the integral over qx log that density ratio, which is, um, which is this here. Okay, so uh, it's not the KL, I mean, the, this quantity here is not the KL divergence between W and W0, right? Uh, but it's, um, it's this, this quantity. So using, using the actual true distribution. 
worth pointing out that if it is realizable, it reduces to k of w. That's right. Yeah. So in the realizable case, so that um, so that this is actually the distribution p x w zero is equal to q of x. Uh, I guess I'm drawing this picture in a weird way, right? Uh, over here, I've got parameters, and over here, I've got distributions. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um. I don't know. I don't know how to fix the picture exactly. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I can get I can get rid of the label. <laughs> it, it might be worth considering um, since since we are considering you know integrating in different regions of W anyway, we might just draw kind of a bigger W, and then have Q to be somewhere, yeah. and then we are restricting ourselves to a sub region um, to talk about. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, so let's just call this point out here. Um, let's just call it V. And we're, we're assuming here that PX V is QX. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's reasonable. Um, yeah, as you say. So we're sort of assuming that the true distribution is realizable, but in a larger class of parameters than we're currently considering. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. OK. So. Uh, this quantity in the denominator is not the KL divergence, but let's think about it as nonetheless a measure of the, which it is, right, uh, of the the difference between these two distributions, PXW0 and PXW. Um, it's, you know, the expected difference in the number of bits um, that you, uh, so how do we think about this information theoretically? So. Uh, that difference, so the qx log pxw0 um, gives me the expected number of bits I need to encode measurements that I take, uh, that I receive from a distribution pxw0 and, and likewise for the other term. Um, and so it's the difference, so it has the information theoretic content of the difference in the number of bits I need to encode observations from these two distributions. That's a reasonable measure of the distance in information theoretic terms. Okay, so, but consider W as being close to W0, right? So I want you to think about a little neighborhood here. Around W0 and around W0 prime. Okay, so we're taking a point W here and we're looking at uh, so relative to that distance between W and W0, we're looking at the variance of, the, of this log density ratio. Um, I don't actually know how to think about this ratio, to be honest. Um, I don't know if you have a, a good way of thinking about it, Edmund. Um, it's something that, you know, I understand how it appears technically, but I don't really know how to think about it. Uh, neither do I. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a clever definition. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Maybe not completely obvious because it isn't how Watanabe set it up originally, right? Okay, so mm. anyway, relatively finite variance. Uh, what it says is that, is that this ratio is bounded by a constant independent of w0, w0 prime, etc. Okay, so maybe there's many of these points going off, right? The way I'm drawing them, they look like they're getting further and further away, but you should sort of view them as being clustered around v, maybe. Um, and the behavior is simultaneously bounded by a single constant, C0. So that's relatively finite variance. Uh, now, what Watanabe shows is that if you have this condition, well, I guess the first thing to say is that realizability implies uh, this definition is on page 72, by the way. So he proves that relatively finite variance uh, 
is implied by realizability. What happened to Dan? Yeah, I got disconnected. Can you hear me now? Right. Yeah, I can hear. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Um, I still can't see anything. <laughs> uh, I guess I can keep talking while it's reconnecting. Sorry about that, everyone. I got disconnected for some reason. Um, how, how long was I talking into a blank microphone for? No, like 10 seconds. Okay, no, no problem then. Okay. Um, all right. So relatively finite variance is implied by realizability. And it's also implied by regularity. And relatively finite variance implies what Watanabe calls essential uniqueness, which is not that the parameter is unique, the one that determines the closest point to V, that would be you know, something like regularity, I guess. But essential uniqueness means that the distributions are the same. So essential uniqueness says that Px w0 is Px w0 prime for all w and w0 prime in w0, a w opt. I hope I didn't do that anywhere else. Um, so that is that uh, taking this and this and this parameter, they all give you uh, the same distribution, right? Which is not automatic otherwise. OK. Um, that's the setup for stating the theorem that uh, Kenneth uh, Edmund was referring to last time. So maybe I only have time to state that, which is the sort of free energy asymptotic formula, uh, but in the sort of most general form that I know of that it's published. Maybe Edmund can correct me. But so let's let's state a theorem, and this is uh, let's see. This is page 137 of the green book. I might write something on the other board. Uh, oh, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this isn't meant to be me giving a lecture, right? It's just, uh, so yeah, feel free to, anybody should derail this and interrupt at any point. Um, okay, so... Uh, I guess I need one more definition. Um, so assuming this isn't the theorem, this is the definition, this is standard form, which is, I guess, what Edmund is kind of assuming. Uh, assuming uh, relatively finite variance. So that means that we can, without, so, um, it's well defined to write down px w0 or w0 and w opt, right? Because it's independent of the choice of w0. So that means I can write this down and I can define kw to be this thing here. So in the realizable case, that's what we're used to as being kw, but otherwise it's it's something new, right? Because uh, this numerator here is not the same as Qx in the non-realizable case. So just to flag that, this, this k is now something uh, more general um, than what we're usually discussing. Okay, so we say, um, 
So the model, truth, prior triplet is in standard form. So this is the target of the resolution procedure. If uh, functions AXW, BW exist with BW greater than zero, uh, well, I guess uh, the origin is supposed to be um, in W. There exists a BW positive on a neighborhood of zero. And the log density ratio function is given by AXW times some uh, monomial. And K is given by this. And phi, the prior, is uh, given by this. So K is, K and H are multi-indices. Okay, so this exists by a resolution of singularities. But we say it's in standard form if, if, that's, if that's the case. Uh, okay, now let me try and state the theorem. This is, I have to find it, so bear with me. Uh, theorem 11, I forget which section, uh, 5.3. Ah, oh, cool, yeah, thanks Edmund. Um, where should I state this? Uh, maybe I'll state it at the bottom of the board. I can get rid of this exists. Oh, you, you can erase my things. I just want to point out that um, one interpretation of that is the difference. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, of the KL, yeah. It's K, it is equal to K of W minus K of W naught. That's a good way to think about it, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, so theorem 11. Uh, what did I say? Section 5.3. Green book. Page 153. Says that... Uh, If the above holds, that is, the model is relatively finite variance and in standard form. Uh, being in standard form, I guess we fix by resolution, but the relative finite variance is, a, is an actual hypothesis. Then um, the free energy defined as before has asymptotic expansion Fn is n ln w zero. Again, that's independent of w zero in w opt, right? You know, minus, minus log some stuff. This is the, the random variable uh, plus a something converging to zero in probability as n goes to infinity. Okay, so that's that's the most general form of the asymptotic expansion of the free energy I know. Uh, well, maybe maybe the renormalizable renormalizable condition paper has a more general form. Uh, I I doubt it. I, I think it's literally the same. same. Yeah, um, that's right. Because the formulation is the same as well. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, I may have the dates wrong, but I think the green book is kind of. It comes after that renormalizable condition one, right? It's yep. kind of like him updating the gray book with stuff from that WPSC mm -hmm. paper. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so uh, what to say about that? In the case where the true distribution is realizable, then uh, this N ln w0 term uh, is just as we considered it before. Um, and uh, I guess it's just a constant, it just boils down to the empirical entropy, right? Um, so that's, uh, I guess I stated that last time, right? Uh, so S, S, N, S, N plus lambda log N plus stuff. So that's in the realizable case. And that's, that's the form of this asymptotic expansion that's in the gray book. So this is just generalizing that to the case where it's not necessarily realizable, but has this weaker condition of relative finite variance. So I guess uh, I'm, so I've just unpacked Edwin's comment from last time. That's all I've achieved here. Uh, but um, I guess the hope is that we can apply this uh, to the case that I was presenting at the beginning, right? Where there's a subset that is off W0. Um, is that an accurate description of your comments from last time, Edmund? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so basically with the picture of uh, W uh, being large, larger and so restricting our W into a smaller region. I, I need some, we probably need some other symbols too. <laughs> uh, we, we have W and, oh, V, you, you, yeah. Uh, you mentioned V, so. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I guess we're out of time, sorry, to hold mm -hmm. all of the session. Um, but yeah, maybe we can we can try and see if that works next time. Yep. Are, are there any questions? I'm gonna head off. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. All right, yeah, I'm gonna hop you. into Discord for the, um, for the code session and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.